Nobody in here cares about you, Hannah. Nobody. I don't care about those people and what they think. I'm here as an elected deacon representing the entire church body. Uh, Charlie, business meetings in 10 minutes. You can say what you need to say there. No. What we have is for in here man to man. I don't want to stir up the church any more than it's already stirred up. You've been a fine preacher. And you have preached a lot of fine sermons. Uh, Wayne, I'm not sure I like you talking in the past tense. Well, remember, the three of us represent a lot of people. I'm sure you do. For that reason, you really need to listen to us. I'm listening. There is no way we can go forward with this idea of yours and that bleeding heart Wanda Yancey. You know, I wish I had more church members whose heart bled like hers. Pastor? If you keep pushing that women's center down our throat and preaching these sermons, trying to make the congregation feel guilty, then... Then what? Not that we want it, but there's been discussion that might very well be a vote on you at the next deacon's meeting. Charlie, we don't want it to come to that. But people are really beginning to grumble now that you've pushed this thing to a vote. Okay, we're following protocol. Well, you know the study group has already unanimously recommended it. But that ain't the deacons, and you know damn... You know the deacons have to approve it according to our bylaws. Since when did we in the church have to vote on whether or not to feed the hungry or to help someone in need? I know what you're saying. I've read the Bible, but it's not that simple. It's one thing to offer someone assistance, and it's another to invite them into your home. We're only trying to protect people and the church. Well, good day, gentlemen. It's been good to see you again, as always. Even if the church votes to do it tonight, it ain't going to get funded. I'm chairman of the stewardship committee, and you and I both know we only have half the funds needed to finish the education building. And I'm not approving any more monies until that's paid for. Okay, okay, you've had your say. Now, if there's nothing else, I've got a business meeting to get ready for. Just remember, Pastor, we're not the bad guys. We just think it would be wiser to take care of our own first. Oh, what can I say then? A visit from the three wise men. I'll be sure to look for your star tonight before I go to sleep.
Pastor, Mrs. Woodson wants to speak with you. Juan, I'm sorry. I really don't have time right now. Maybe later. This Women's Shelter Project is really beginning to ruffle a lot of feathers. Well, my dad always said doing what you're supposed to do is never the easy thing, but it's the right thing. I'm sorry to come by at the last minute, but I have something on my heart that's been bothering me for several weeks. Right. I needed to talk with you. I really appreciate your words concerning our responsibility to the needy. When Dr. Lyons was here, he tried something like this 20 years ago. I think I was one of the few that voted for it. I'm trying to settle my affairs before I move into the lakeside villages. And I want to be the first to give to the shelter for women that you've been talking about. You know, that's so kind of you, but we really haven't started a financial campaign yet. Tonight, we're just voting on whether or not to accept the committee's recommendation. Oh, please, I just want to be the first to give. If I've counted correctly, there should be $160,000. I know Dr. Lyon's wife is donating his office building to the church. That should be enough to fix it up and furnish it and also pay Wanda's salary for a year. I should say so. <laughs> I think everyone knows what's before us tonight. The recommendation before the church is to accept the office building being offered by Dr. Lyon's widow and opening a transitional facility for displaced women. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Uh, second. I'll second it. Discussion? Is there any provision in case it doesn't work out? Well, the motion calls for the deacons to reevaluate within a year and then bring it back to the church. I'd like to ask the pastor a question. Pastor, we don't have enough money yet to finish the education building, and yet you want us to go out and get more money. It doesn't seem like good stewardship to me. Well, uh, it'll be a close shave, but I think we can handle it. How do you figure? Church member came by tonight and gave us a cash gift of $160,000, which our ushers are depositing right now, which will be more than enough to remodel the building for our purposes. Any other questions? If there are no more questions, I'm going to call a vote. All those in favor of this recommendation from the Ministry Committee, please stand up. Thank you. All those opposed to beginning this ministry, please do the same. Thank you. By a vote of 84 to 76, the motion passes. before it will be open. Four weeks. A conditional use permit has been granted contingent on the vote tonight. And a group of volunteers are all lined up to get it set. Amen. All right, if there's no other business, let's take our Bibles and turn to Acts chapter 16 where we find Paul and Silas in prison. Some fresh air, Hannah girl. Yeah, get it yourself. Do visiting on the second floor? We're finished. I just wanted to come by and see the ladies in isolation. Ladies? <laughs> Hi. Hey. Wanda Yancey from First Baptist. I teach the Bible study and parenting classes here. Heard from one of your friends in Block F you were in here. You met me, impressed. Tell me what's been going on. Well, what's the matter to you? Well, it 
matters enough that I come here every Tuesday and Friday to lead classes, meet with the women. Well, I hope you get a medal. Hey, my boyfriend, he left crack in the truck and I got busted for Man, it. we all know whores do crack. If you don't mind, we're trying to have a conversation. When you get out of ISO, you can come to our women's Bible study. No, not me. You do not want me to tell you what I think about God. Besides, I don't think you church folk care about people anyway. Yeah, that's the one thing you got right. You ready for bed? Hello? Earth to Wanda. Come in, Wanda. Hey. Hey, what'd you do that for? You're in your own little world over here. Oh, sorry. I'm just finishing up my notes from the jail today. Anything new? Yeah. I've got a real project. A new girl. She's cold and hard as steel. Really? Yeah. But there's something about this girl that gets to me. I just can't put my hand on it. Butthead, I'm leaving it at the beat. I'm giving you a bleeping message. I've been in here for four weeks and I have not heard peep from you. You are toast when I get out. Yeah, read chapter seven and I'll see you next time. Yes, okay? ma'am. You're too late for class. Yeah, listen, uh, one of the girls, Stacy, said you could probably pull a few strings and get me out of here quicker. Well, I'm not sure what she said, but. Sometimes the judge grants an early release for some of the women who are doing well in the program. I am ready to get out of here. I am willing to do anything. I am just going crazy in here. Hannah, I get a lot of women like that, but the judge only grants a handful at a time. I need out of here. I do have a meeting with the judge on Friday. I'll see what I can do about getting you into the program. Hey, nice. Bill has been posted for you. It was great. Not another night in here. I didn't think she was talking to the judge till Friday. Wasn't on she? Hey, Mr. Lyle Sanders posted bail. Babies, good to see you again. You jerk, where have you been? I have called you eight times in the past four weeks and I have not heard one word from you. Baby doll, I've had to bust my butt trying to raise the money to get you out. <laughs> been working night and day trying to get the money. Asshole, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't even be in here. Peter, you're the one that got up and drove my truck off. I don't even want to see you. Just give me my car keys. Hey, I came down here to get you, sweetie. I put up the door to get you out. Then just take my butt home. Yeah, just what I was saying. Well, you can forget that. Give me my car keys. Baby, I come down here to catch you, and you talk to me like that? <sighs> oh, nice legs. Chicken legs. Nice. Wow, I'm done. Just ignore them. No, I'm sick of it, Laura. I am sick of the crap and the comments. They just keep reminding me. I know, I know. But we got the house payments to make. I am ready for a real job. Something that is going to bring meaning to my life. No, I'm done. I'll see you guys in the house. Larry's going to be pissed. Well, then Larry could stick it where the sun doesn't shine. I'm sick and tired of him looking at me while I dance anyway. Baby, you can't quit. We need the money. Especially after I put up the money to bail you out. Do you know how much money it costs to bail someone out with an assault and a police officer? I do not want to be 52 years old grinding the slow ride in front of a bunch of drunken men. Just go outside for a minute. Cool down. No, I told you, I'm done. If you want to be a bartender for the rest of your life, then fine by me. But I'm ready to do something else with my life. Just don't go off and do something stupid again.
I do appreciate your interest, Hannah. I really want to give it my best shot. The only problem is this assault on a police officer. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. I can't believe it's been almost a year. It's looking better every day. Al Miller's group has been wonderful. Anything I've needed, they've fixed or replaced. You know, I'm turning away five women every day needing help. The church would only have listened to your dad 20 years ago. Yeah. I remember the night of the big church meeting. I was about 12, and I remember sitting next to my dad and him, I won't say arguing, but debating heatedly with the other deacons. It was the year that all the orange groves froze, so there were hundreds of hungry families needing food and help. My dad wanted the church to turn one of the houses they owned into something to help the families. What happened? The church voted 198 to 12 to keep the house as a fellowship hall for meetings and socials. And it went along with his favorite saying that most churches are just glorified country clubs, not even close to helping people the way Jesus did. Well, I hate to say it, but that's a pretty fair assessment. How do the women do Sunday? Oh. They enjoyed the message and the service, but some of our good church women are still not too keen on our newest church members. <laughs> well, it takes a while to change some attitudes. Yeah. I really appreciate everything you've done to make this happen. Well, it was the right thing. I just regret that it took so long. You fit the profile of what the state is looking for in its Second Start program. Oh, great. After the first eight weeks, you'll be enrolled in work-study and then paid for the remainder. Then you're guaranteed a job through placement. Thank you. I've never been so excited. Maybe finally I'll have a career. You will. You gotta go back to work this week. Talk to Larry tonight. He said he'll take you back if you can start Thursday. Well, I'm not going back. Well, then I'm gonna have to start charging you rent. Oh, I don't think so, since I paid rent for two months while you were in rehab. And by the way, why are you out so late? <sighs> Larry, he's trying to get ready for the health department inspection. Yeah, this late? That's when the bartender's inventory is. Hello? Listen, you're gonna have to do something to help make ends meet here. Four more weeks and I get a regular paycheck from the work-study program. Actually, I have something else in mind to get us out of this pinch. Oh, you need to get you out of this pinch. You're gonna have to start bringing in some money. Or leave. Leave? I've been paying on this house for the past two years, Lyle! It's in my name and you know it. I don't know you anything. I can't leave! I just started! You may have just started, but we're finished as far as I'm concerned. You know, I'm tired as hell of you. I spring you up from jail and you cheat me like crap. I'll just screw you, Lyle! You took the words right out of my mouth. I have a friend, and he set you up doing what you do best. Or used to do best. You can make some real money selling your ass. I mean, your assets. Excuse me? If you're willing to do a few things, you can make some serious money. What are you saying? You want me to become a whore? You already are! Why don't get paid for it? Get out! I'm sick of your crap! Get out! Fine, I'm leaving! Fine, get out! I'm sick of your frigid self! Get out! for the night. 35 a night. Or 200 for the week. Crap. Tell you what. Tell just for you. 150. Thanks. Just give me the key. Quit looking at me like that. I wouldn't sleep with you if you paid me. I thought us at a good time. Our delivery girl just walked yesterday. Oh, great. What do I need to do? Just fill that out. Oh, I got to ask. Any drug charges? Good. Because if you did, you couldn't drive for us. I really appreciate this. I needed a job today bad. You saved my life. <laughs> Timing's everything, huh? When you're done with this here, come back and see me, and we'll go over the new employee packet in my office. 
About frickin' time my luck started changing. <laughs> keep you, but we just got your background check in. And company policy specifically states that I terminate any employee who falsifies an application. I'm sorry. Are you talking about the drug charge? Mr. Gerard, you have to believe me. I didn't do the drugs and hand that officer. It was just an accident. I have to have this job. I am completely out of money. Hannah, I'm sorry. I really care about what happens to you, but I have no choice. You don't care. thing I broke down by a garage. You know, I think I did a delivery here yesterday. <laughs> Man, I have to be blind not to notice you when you got in and out of the truck. You want the good news or the bad news? Not both. Bad news is your engine's blown, overheated, head probably warped. I can fix it. I just lost my job yesterday, so I don't have much money. We can work something out. Come on in my office. Head needs to be resurfaced, rings replaced, total about $900. Oh, forget it. I'll, I'll just walk. Hold on, hold on. I said we'd work something out. Give me $300 down, cover the cost of machine shop, and I'll give you terms on the rest. Terms. Races are next week in Daytona. You spend a couple nights with me, I'd be real inclined to donate the labor. Just give me the keys. Just one night. You creep. I can see why you don't have anyone to go with you. Go to hell. If you'd go with me, it'd be heaven, baby. <laughs>
Hey, thought you could use a little company tonight. Let it go like you should be drinking. The nonetheless immediately. And she's all dead. Is she conscious? I don't know, maybe. Just I don't care, just send somebody quick. Come on. Yeah, it's that big bass. It's 144 it's that Howard 27. Room number 116. Oh my god, don't die on me. Since you were bay corrected here, you're only allowed three days at the facility. Do you have anywhere to go? No, I paid for the hotel with the last bit of money I had. That's why I tried to kill myself. It was my last night and the last of my money. There is a new women's shelter here in town that has some transitional housing. With your permission, I'd like to give a call and see if they have a place for you. Hi, this is Janet with Placement at Livestream Behavioral. I have a client here with no place to go, and I'm checking with you on availability. Suicide attempt. Drug overdose. Hannah Moore. Okay, thanks. She'll be here shortly. Oh, what's this place again? Okay, I need someone to take her to get food stamps this afternoon. Mm-hmm. Oh, sounds good. Lacey could watch her kids while you go. Okay, thanks. Can't get away from each other, can we? Yeah, I guess not. I'm glad that you're here. Look, this is just temporary until I can find a job. I have never asked anybody for anything, and I sure as hell don't plan on starting now. If Lifestreams had to place me here, I wouldn't even be in here. I know, but I'm still glad you're here, even if for a short while. One thing we ask is that all residents attend a weekly worship service. Do you have any kind of church background? No, I've never been. Well, I'm going to be gone this weekend, but I'll have one of the girls sit with you and show you around. I look forward to talking. Monday, we're going to start your case plan. Come on, let me show you your room. I'll be through here in just a moment. Hey, no problem. It's not like I got anywhere to go. My name's Leslie. I'm Nana Moore. Saw you came in yesterday. Yep. Boyfriend troubles. Yeah, among other things. Don't worry. It's not that bad. What's not that bad? Here, the shelter. It's not that bad. This is my first and hopefully my last, because as soon as I get my car patched up and a job, I am out of here. How long have you been in here? Three months. But Wanda's already helped me get on the subsidized housing list, so I shouldn't be here too much longer. 
That is one nosy lady. I know. When I came in here, I was like, what do all these white people want always being up in my business? <laughs> but they really helped me and my kid out of a jam, though. There are worse places to be. Believe me, I know. See you around. Mind if I join you? Sure. Can I give you some advice? You need to be careful. That was one of the rules you agreed to. What did I agree to? Going to church. We usually sit together as a group in the big house. When I didn't see you, figured you'd split. If you don't follow the rules, they do have the right to kick you out. I've never been to church before. I just really don't know what to do. Don't have to do nothing. Just sit there. Listen if you want. Well, do you like it? Didn't when I was a kid, when my grandmother made me go. But now it's growing on me. These people, there's something wrong with them. What you mean? Everybody's so nice. It's like they got something <laughs> up their sleeve. You know, I just don't trust people like that, being friendly all the time. <laughs> Girl, they ain't aliens. You ain't got nothing to worry about with them. I've been here since it opened, and they ain't ate me yet. Comforting. <laughs> you just be careful. I don't want to see you out on the street again, girlfriend. Well, that would make the two of us. I know most of you have already met Hannah, and this is Shelly. She's brand new this afternoon. Hannah and Shelly were in our third class of Moving Beyond Your Pasts. Tonight, well, why don't you just follow along in the book and feel free to jump in the discussion. Okay, share some, some things with the group about what you found out in your reading. Um, that God desires truth and honesty even at the deepest levels of our lives. Okay. That he wants us to experience his love and forgiveness in all areas of our lives. What does it mean in all areas? <sighs> Every area. Mm -hmm. Our words, our money, mm -hmm. our sexuality, mm -hmm. our relationships, mm -hmm. like what we say to other people. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that everything's going to be pleasant and pure, but what it does mean is that we can be real with each other when we experience things like pain, joy, love, anger. Let's pick up where we were on recovery. Okay, who wants to go first? I'll go first. Um, I'm still wrestling with having close relationships with people. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm seeing that I've grown to control them rather than to relate with them. Crystal, it was a big help to me to understand why I put up barriers to people. Mm -hmm. To not care. Mm -hmm. To not be vulnerable. Yes, you know, I know what you mean. I mean, because it's like growing up with the abuse and the dysfunction, you know, it's made us bulletproof. And it, really. it hurt too much to hurt, right? So we develop a suit of emotional armor. We learn not to feel. Over time, we gradually learned that getting close to people meant giving them more power to hurt us. So we become frightened with the thought of giving anyone more ability to hurt us. So we develop ways to avoid closeness to other people. Anything you want to talk about? Remember, 
our agreement. Okay. I'm discouraged. Just feel overwhelmed. I'm just wondering whether I'm making any difference with these girls. And acceptance from some of the church family hasn't exactly been overwhelming. Forget Mrs. Waterman. She didn't really shoot you the bird. She was adjusting her wig. <laughs> Thanks. I know I can always go to you for encouragement. And there's still something about Hannah that haunts me. I just can't quite figure it out. And now, the deacons are meeting about shutting the ministry down. You don't think that it could really be shut down, do you? The group says they have enough votes to overturn it. What do you think? Really? Can't say. I just never thought it would be this hard. Don't wait up, I'll be late. Hey. Now that's what I call motivation. Don't wait up. I'll be up. Pastor, I appreciate the scriptures you've used to make your point, and I appreciate all that Bob's wife has done to help these needy women, but the fact still is we're losing good members over this. Yeah. Brother Charlie is right. I counted five families that have left since we opened that shelter, and those women started coming to church. So what is your solution to this obvious need in our community? I say we take up an offering and get them a few nights in a cheap hotel and make them get a job. We don't need to develop a reputation as a welfare flop house. The only reputation I want for this church is one that cares for all kinds of people. Pastor, you're a good man, but I'm sorry. Our church isn't ready for this. Besides, I don't know any other churches doing this sort of thing. I understand, and no one said this would be easy. But how would you men feel if I was spending my time down by the mall talking to prostitutes? That's exactly what Jesus did with the woman at the well and with Mary Magdalene. Pastor, I think we've had enough discussion on it. Everyone ready for a vote? Oh, yeah. Yes. All right, the decision before us is topping the women's shelter and taking the money to put up women on a short-term basis in a local hotel. How many in favor of continuing the ministry? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How many for stopping the current arrangement for the women's ministry? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The vote is ten to ten. We'll have to take it to the church as a split decision and let the uh, church decide. When's the meeting? Can we make it on the 19th? The 19th it is. I'll be there. I'll be there. Be yeah. Good. No, no. Hey, Leslie, you got a second? I always got a sec for my homegirl. I've only told one other person this, but after tonight, I really feel like I need to do this. Go ahead and dump that load, girlfriend. My sister's got strong shoulders. Thanks. Mama? Yes, sugar cakes? Do you have to go to work tonight? Baby doll, somebody's got to bring home the bacon, because your daddy sure can't. Mama, do you have to dress like that? I got to. Helps with the tips. Someday you'll understand. Please don't go. Stay home and spend some time with me tonight. Hannah, darling, I'm doing this for you. You're going to be a teenager soon, and you're going to want clothes and a car. Someone's got to make the money to get us ahead. Yeah, Hannah. Your mama got to dress like a slut. Than to make you proud. Sugar cakes. I've got to go to work and I'll be back after you're asleep. But I'll be there in the morning before you go to school, okay? I don't want clothes. I want you. You say that now. But when the boys are looking at you, you are going to want clothes. Clothes that accent those good looks. Mama, please. I don't want to hear anything else. And while your daddy's watching Monday Night Football, I want you to work on your schoolwork. I read Mrs. Kemp's letter and I declare... You've got to get that little button gear so you can make it to middle school.
can't, Leslie. It just hurts too much. Don't. I want you to have it. I want you to have it. Okay, can I get anybody anything before you all get started? Ooh, well, how about some tostitos and guacamole? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, honey, I had it on my shopping list, but there with the uh, Russian caviar and Perrier. Uh -huh. <laughs> all right, let's start with prayer. Father, I pray that you will open hearts and minds tonight. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Have any of you ever had surgery before? I mean, anything, gallbladder, heart transplant, brain transplant? <laughs> yes. I've had my appendix out. Okay. Now, most every time before we have surgery, what does a doctor do? Wash their hands. <laughs> yes, and what else? They run tests. Right, a diagnosis, a medical inventory of where we're at physically. Tonight, we're going to take a moral inventory. Let me tell you about Lisa. Lisa was dependable. She was a good worker. Her boss moved her into the front office, and he bragged about her to the other workers. But Lisa had also experienced sexual abuse from her father. Because of that abuse, she could never see herself in a positive light because of the shame that her childhood produced. One day, her boss complimented her and she immediately told him about something that she had done wrong. She had to find flaws in herself. Now, we move through denial in stages. Sometimes it's a giant leap forward, but sometimes it's two steps backwards. Dysfunctional families often create situations that make us unable to feel good about ourselves. You may find you have as much trouble listing your strengths as you do your weaknesses. We may fear writing something down because we're afraid that someone will see what we've written. We may fear that if we write it, we may have to share it. And the decision to trust another person with the facts of your moral inventory is a big decision. Can I help you? Uh, yeah, I'm looking for a car. Anything in particular? Nah, I don't need much. Just four wheels so I can get a job. I just got this at the auction last night. How much? Let's go up to the office and take a look. I'm Uncle Jerry. What's your name? Uh, Hannah. Hannah, nice to meet you. I've got 2200 in it. Also, all I have for a trade-in is a car that isn't working. Well, I'm sure we can work something out. Listen, jerk, I'm tired of men like you. How about I call the Better Business Bureau and let you work out a sexual harassment charge? Whoa, you got the wrong cowboy. This one wears white. Look at this. See that? It means something. I go to First Baptist on Main Street. You do? Ever since high school. Well, that's where I go. You do? Well, I'm living at the women's shelter until I can find a job and get out on my own. Tell you what. I've got to meet my buyer in Dade City this afternoon. Give me a couple of days, and we can work something out. 
I've got the number down at the shelter. I'll call you. Well, I uh, probably need to save some more money anyway, but uh, how about you not selling that car to anyone just yet? My word. Is there anyone else who God is speaking to today? You won't hear thunder. You won't see lightning. But you might feel a pull on your heart. But uh, this car could use some real help. Well, it's not mine. It belongs to the shelter where I live. Oh, really? Where? Uh, the women's shelter, the one run by First Baptist downtown. <laughs> something the matter? Yeah, something's the matter. I'm a deacon at that church. <laughs> that is great to meet you. Thanks for helping me out. I'm glad it happened. After the next meeting, I'm going to make sure you ladies have something a little better to drive than this loser from Junkyard Wars. <laughs> Could you make sure the handbrake's on, please? Oh, absolutely. Hey, you! Long time no see. I like that's a bad thing. There's some things about you. Sure you have. Yeah, that you've become one of those church people. Well, I'm just trying to make some positive changes. Look, Hi. you can act however you want. Me and everyone knows you ain't nothing but a slut. You alone. Why don't you come on back with me? No. You know I'm the best you ever had. No. Hannah, is everything all right? Stay out of this porky pig. What do you say you come back with me? Talk? Pass things up? What do you say? No. Come on. No. No. You want to come no. Let me go. Let me go. Hannah, get in the car. Go. You're not worth it. You hear me, Hannah? You're not worth it! You're not worth it, Hannah! <laughs> Hannah? Chloe? Oh, my God! Oh, I don't believe this! This is unbelievable! I haven't seen you since we worked at the Silver Star. I literally, I've been in town like six seconds, and I first person I run into is you. Well, how'd you come here? Oh, my boyfriend got busted in Orlando. It's a long story, so I'm kind of on the street till I find something else or someone else. <laughs> oh, wow. So, it is so I, great to see you. I, I tell you what, let me go get the rest of the stuff on my car, and then we'll, we'll catch up. Okay, sure. Hey, girl. Hey. I thought 
You said this was a, uh, a great place. Well, you got a bed to sleep in. Yeah, well, I was kind of interested in a, a live bed to sleep in. What? Well, you remember Alan? Well, I called him from the house phone when everyone was at dinner, and he's having a big party tonight, and he wants us to come. I don't think so. Oh, come on. Didn't you read the contract you signed when you checked in here? Yeah, but my roommate says that girls sneak out of here all the time. Yeah, they do. Do they get caught? Not often. Have you even been out once since you've been in here? Yeah, well, you're overdue. Let's go. Put some makeup on. I really want to go back. I don't believe this. This party animal talking here. You used to drink me under the table. Yeah, that was then and this is now. Chloe, please take me back. No, not yet. All right, let's go meet the guys and then I'll take you back. Chloe, you wrote the book on the top 10 dumbest things women do to mess themselves up. Let me in. The back door. Hannah. You know what this means. I'm sorry, but this is serious. You know the rules. Look, Miss Stoneman, I didn't do anything. I know we're not supposed to leave, but nothing happened. Look, if you don't tell Wanda, who's to know? I have rules too, Hannah. I have to follow them. I don't have a choice. Oh, come on. You don't know what it took to get back here. Hannah, I'm sorry. Now, the church has set up these rules for good reasons. There are plenty of other women who can use our help. All we're asking is that you're willing to abide by the rules. But if no. you just... No, I'm sorry. Hannah, I'm truly sorry but I'm afraid it looks like you won't be able to stay. Those are the rules. So for now, go get some rest. Wanda will see you in the morning. You see the number of women I turn away every day needing help. When Chloe arrived, I wasn't so sure about her, but you, I believed in you. The house mother told me your side of the story, but I'm afraid I don't have a choice. But I don't want to go. Please let me stay. You knew the rules. Hannah, there are others who are desperately needing and wanting to come in here. I mean, you hear the phone calls. Just this morning, I had to turn away three ladies. Wanda, please believe me. I've made mistakes in my life and I've made bad choices. And sneaking off with Chloe was a bad choice. I get it. But when I got to the party, I realized it was a bad choice. I didn't use drugs. I didn't sleep with anybody. I didn't even have a drink. I just left. I finally made the right decision in my life and I still lose. Hannah. I know you have rules. But for once in my life, I feel safe. I feel accepted, and I feel loved, and I still blow it. Hannah, we have rules, but we also have forgiveness. I also believe in you. I believe in what God can do in you, but you've got to make the decision to let him. I did talk to the pastor, and he's willing to let you stay this time, but you can't blow it again. Thank you. Thank you for believing in me. As we deal with this brokenness, we do find ourselves in a place of having to deal with some 
very painful memories. You know that pain that we talked about last time? Sometimes it's dull and distant. Sometimes it feels as fresh as if it just happened today. But above everything, I feel like I can't let anyone know that I have this brokenness and pain inside of me. Yeah, I know. There's a little voice inside that says, you have to keep it a secret at all costs because if anybody knew what was going on inside, they would turn their head in disgust. As we've been working through this chapter, what are some of the emotions, some of the things you've felt? Rejection. Shame. Fear. Insecurity. Tonight, I want you all to see that you're not alone in these experiences, emotions, and struggles. As a child, we learn to feel shame for the actions of others. And dealing with that shame means letting go and acknowledging that that shame was not and is not our shame. Do you think you passed the test? I hope so. So what are you doing today? Do you want to come over to my house? See if you can get her in the car. Nah. Come on, do it. Hey, Hannah. Hey, Jordan. What about a ride home? Mm, no thanks, I'm good. <laughs> Bet she is good. <laughs> get her in the car. Come on, I'll tell you some more jokes like in math class. Okay. Oh, come on, it'll be fun. Okay, but I need to get home quick. All right. Anna, this is Trey, and this is Brandon. I hate men. I hate sex. Hannah, you've got to press charges. I can't do this. Yes, yes you can. And you will. I've already called. The rape examiner is expecting you. Forget it. Just take me back. No. No, I won't. I mean, you could have an STD or something worse. Don't let these jerks get away with this. Taking a picture? It's required by law. Victims of Crime Act here in the state. Nobody will see it, will they? Judge, the investigator, the attorney, and the jury. Only the whole world. 
Most rape cases are lost because either the victim doesn't press charges or there's a break in the chain of evidence. Chain of evidence? Everything has to be collected and stored forensically. Has to be a protected chain of evidence so the defense can't claim it was tampered with. If you'll open your mouth. <coughs> How much longer? Just a few more minutes and I'll have you up and off this bench. I don't care what you say. I'm not pressing charges. I've heard that a hundred times from girls just like yourself. I'm not pressing charges. I was stupid for getting myself into that situation. I deserved it. No one deserves that. If you don't, he'll just do it to another girl on another day. You don't want that, do you? Listen, we have a counselor here to talk with you. Sarah, take me home. Emma! Take me home now. Aren't you listening to anything that woman has to say? <laughs> Nothing would become of it. It would just be my word against his. Tell me. <laughs> Tell them. Who did it? Let's go now. Just drive. Anytime you need to talk, Here's my number. I mean it. Anytime, day or night. Now I remember. I recognized you the moment you stepped into the jail cell. Oh, what a horrible day. That was an end of that very horrible. Walked up to the house. I saw some lady I didn't recognize sitting in the car outside. So I walked in the door. My father took one look at me and walked out to that lady sitting in the car outside. And out of our lives forever. Not that that was a bad thing. My mom and I had a hard time financially, but God, at least the abuse stopped. And I think that was the day I quit caring about anything or anyone. The day your childhood ended. Oh. That happened much, much earlier. Kara, come on out! Go to hell, Frank! Kara! It is Friday! It is payday! It is pay night! Forget it, Frank! Come on, Kara! Come on, let me in. Frank, you are a loser and you make me sick. I don't know how to make it any plainer. with your daddy in his chair. Have you got a sack? I know what you did last night was painful, but I am so proud of you. You've really come a long way. You know, I've always felt ashamed and embarrassed, like it was my fault, like I should have done something to stop it. But after last night, I realized it wasn't me. I've been carrying this weight around all my life, and now it's just lifted. 
<laughs> well, that's why we're all here, Hannah, to bear one another's burdens. Wow, no, it's funny. All this time, I thought no one could possibly understand what I was going through. Well, I'm glad you felt safe enough to share. Well, this feeling safe thing is kind of new to me, but I think I can get used to it. Well, I better get going. Leslie's taking me job hunting today. Oh, um, wait. I thought you might need these. Yeah? Jerry Reiser brought these by today. What? They're yours. Uncle Jerry's is giving <laughs> you a car. And he wants to talk to you about a job. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> 7,300. That's the best I can do. Let me know when you decide. Hello, Miss Hannah. Hi, Mr. Riser. Wanda said you needed to see me, but I just wanted to tell you I am so overwhelmed. We got off on the wrong foot, so I thought I owed you first refusal. Sprint is transferring Claire's husband to Kansas City, so I need a secretary. Well, I've never done secretarial work before. I figured Claire can show you the ropes. You open? But of course, I'd love to try. Well, we have an employee packet for you to fill out. Um, Mr. Riser, I just wanted to tell you that car is the nicest thing anybody has ever given me in my entire life. My pleasure. We try to give away two or three a year, and it was your turn. So now fill out that paperwork so you can get started. Thanks. Aren't you forgetting something? What? Aren't you going to ask me how much the job pays? No. Why not? Because I trust you. Today, I want you to envision a scene, one with real drama. Now, most of us can't relate to this story in its depth because we've never seen leprosy up close. The filth, the stench, the hideousness, and the hopelessness. This man was an outcast, not only to the society, but to the Jewish people as well. As an unclean leper, he'd forgotten what it was to have someone come up and shake his hand to have someone give him a hearty hug, or to have a friend slap him on the back. Maybe he was married at one time, possibly even had children, no longer able to enjoy intimate relations with his wife, no longer able to experience the joy of having his children run and jump in his arms. If ever a man was in desperate need for the touch of Christ, it was this man. Wait, nothing but a Nobody even cares about you, Hannah. As a child, you're going to be ashamed. Not worth it, Hannah! Boys, I'm looking at you. You are clothes. Clothes that accept those good looks. I was stupid for getting myself into that situation. You're just like every other man in my life! Think you can hurt yourself. Get out! Dealing with that shame means letting go. I'm glad that you're here. I don't want to see you out on the street again, girlfriend. Hi, John Paquette. Hello, Miss Hill. I believe in what God can do in you, but you've got to make the decision to live. Is there anyone else God is speaking to today? Jesus, if you really can, forgive me and take me just the way I am. I am yours. Boy, our church sure is changing. Certainly isn't the same church it used to be. Yeah, there's some things we really need to talk about. Call Wayne when you get home, and let's meet tomorrow for breakfast at the Mill Whistle to talk things over before presenting it to the deacons. Hannah, I'm thrilled about what you did yesterday. I know, I feel like a new person. Well, that is the general idea. I've got something else I've been meaning to talk to you about. I know you've been avoiding it, but I want you to go to the singles group this week after you get off of work. I want to see you get plugged in more to the life of the church. But I wouldn't even know what to say. I don't know how to look up Bible verses or any of that stuff. You'll be fine. It's a great opportunity to meet new people. Well, I really like the group here. I know, but God wants to broaden your horizons. Have new experiences. Meet new people. Okay. 
Come on, girl. You know we're supposed to go to singles tonight. No, I don't think so. I'm just not ready yet. Ah, uh -huh. no way. You are not staying here and leaving me by myself with all those white people. I don't think I'm ready. Come on. You know there is nothing to be afraid of. Besides, you know those single church guys ain't nothing but a bunch of dweebs who can't get a date. Okay. We'll be partnering up, so let's do this by uh, your birth month. So if you're born in the month of January, at this table, February there, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. We'll be filling these out, and we have a special prize for the winning team. All right, I got an idea. How about you do two, and then I'll do two? That sounds good. Okay. All right, first question, most unusual pets? A turtle named Mr. Pibb. <laughs> Mr. Pibb? I know. <laughs> okay. What's your mother's main name? Lips. Her first name was Ruby. <laughs> I swear. We've got this one hands down. All right, hold on, my turn. Okay, most unusual name for one of your teachers. Piece of cake, Miss Bossy. She was my sixth grade math teacher. Was she? Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, cool, we're on a roll. Most unusual occupation. Sorry, you can be honest. Look, I shovel manure for a summer. I, I was an exotic dancer. Hey, you know, like you said, we're going to win this hands down. Come on, hurry up. I've got to get out of here. Can I, hey, can I call you some time? He was wrong about the dweeb part. Looks like he belongs on the cover of GQ. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Elizabeth had to leave for an emergency in her family. I can't leave the house unattended. I'm sorry. I just don't have anyone I can send. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Hannah, Miss Anderson's calling from the crisis center. They're bringing a teenage girl in, and they need another female there. Now, Wanda's at a conference. Elizabeth's had an emergency, and I can't leave the house unattended. Yeah, what do I do? Oh, well, just what you've heard Elizabeth say she does. Just be there as a support for the victim. Sure. Oh, head on over there. Miss Anderson's there now, and the police are bringing the girl. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and send Hannah over. She's going to be there in a few minutes. to identify and document any injuries. Sweetheart, I'm gonna do the swabs now. Mm. I'm gonna start up at the top with an oral swab, and then your neck and breasts. <coughs> now I need to gather some information so we can say in court what really happened, okay? I hold my hand, please.
time did he see her? Let's see. We'll talk about it in the morning. What happened? Hannah, she didn't come back to the shelter tonight. And then Charlie Trainer saw her walking into Coyotes. I'm sorry. I just don't get it. She really seemed to be turning her life around. She really seemed happy and she liked her job. Why would she just throw that away? I just feel like I've done everything that I can and it's still not good enough. What's the use in trying if it's just gonna turn out the same? Honey, you can't change people. You can only love them. Expected to get results. We're called to do the right thing and love them. You've done the right thing. But it's so hard. Like you always say, doing what we're supposed to do is never the easy thing, but it's the right thing. I know, but this is just the kind of thing that some people are looking for to discontinue the shelter. Do you think that losing Hannah would cause that? That all of this work really would be for nothing. We may have lost Hannah, but we can't lose the shelter. I've got to believe in the people of this church. I wish I could believe. Pastor's secretary just called. The deacons are meeting with the pastor about the shelter, and they're meeting right now. Wanda, you don't think that they're going to close this down, do you? I need this place. I don't have anywhere else to go. Not if I have anything to do with it. We've been discussing it for several weeks. No, Charlie, you can't. Just because one person doesn't work out. Wanda, I don't think you understand. Oh, I understand. Some of these people never wanted this. They didn't want to get their hands dirty. They just wanted to sit in their comfortable padded pews in their big air-conditioned building, feeling proud about how good they are. Wanda, you really need to listen to what Charlie's trying to say. Oh, I know what he's trying to say. I've worked too hard. My father worked too hard to let these guys take the easy way out. It's not supposed to be easy. Anyone can show love to the lovely, but Jesus showed love to everyone at their level. Wanda, it's Hannah. She needs you. Everybody stumbles. I'm just so glad you're here. I didn't stumble. I went to go get Tracy. She's a friend of mine, and she's been on crack for the past two years, and I just had to bring her here. Wanda, I realized it's not just about me. It's about helping others.
Pastor, like I said, we have something to say. I don't think you realize the impact you've had on this congregation. Most importantly, the impact on other people outside this community. Charlie, just look around you. Look at these women. I mean, don't you see the good we're doing? Don't you get it? Charlie, go ahead. Don't stop. You know the money we've set aside for remodeling. Well, last night, the deacons voted unanimously. And instead of using that money to build a new building, we've decided to use it to expand what you've already started and what your father tried to start years ago. For starter, we had in mind another home, this one for children. And I've been reading in the papers about the number of families who can't afford to see a doctor. So maybe we could start a small medical facility. And after what my son went through, I can see a need for a drug and alcohol program for men in this community. Oh, I am so glad that God put you in my life. <laughs> so am I. So am I. <laughs> what do you say we get a room ready for Tracy? We've still got a lot of work ahead of us.